Right. Uh, okay. Let's see. Oh, I think we're live. Yeah, we are. I think we're live. <laughs> Very good. Okay, it's 402, 502 Eastern Standard Time. So, so sorry. You know, just running behind family first. But <laughs> hey. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. How are you? <laughs> I am wonderful on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. <laughs> it is beautiful. It is beautiful. Um, it's like, yes, yeah, it's, it's gotten that warm that, yeah, summer is like here, you know. It but really not, is. Yeah. Well, in, uh, in Houston, summer is already here. No. So, and and that's, <laughs> a, that's the truth with Houston, like, all the time, though. Right. You know, it's hot. It's like, okay, you have winter and then you have summer. That's, and it. that's, that's it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. I'm so glad to talk to you. For all of those who are joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another edition of Meet the Author. We are privileged to sit down with a dear friend and new author, Denisha Prim. Um, Denisha and I, I'm going to let her tell the story of how we, how we met. Uh, because truthfully, I don't remember all of it. I remember fragments and she probably remembers more of it. So (laughs) tell the people, Denisha, tell them. Oh my God. I'm like really trying to figure out it. It's been a while. It's probably been about nine years now. Um, I was working for Legacy Community Health. And I think I want to say it was my first year working for Legacy. And I was in charge of um, bringing in just different community um, advocates and people who were just really wanting to just educate the community. And so I can't remember exactly how I came across you. <laughs> yeah. But I uh, reached out to you and asked you to come speak at one of our um, parent nights. Yeah. And so we used to do like these um, community parent um, steering committee type of meetings um, like every three months. And so you came to Legacy and you spoke at our steering committee. I did. And yeah, uh huh. And um, basically just, you know, told the community how important it is to get kids educated and get them into reading. And yeah, so that was how we started. <laughs> it was great. Now that I, I have the photo and I don't I don't know if you remember the photos that you took of me while I was mm-hmm. presenting and while I was modeling for the parents. But I have that photo and I. I look at it regularly because when you just said nine years, sometimes it's hard for me to think that I have been doing this for over a decade now. Yes. You know? Wow. Like, wow. You know, <laughs> Jeez. but I do you remember doing good work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I mean, and it's, it's alongside allies and advocates and activists like yourself that, mm-hmm. you know, that I continue to show up because it's, it's hard. It's hard work. Yeah. But I remember the picture like yesterday because I was so happy and it was just a wonderful event. So, yeah. And y'all fed yeah. me before. It was nice. We did. We sure did. <laughs> you, you remember that part. I do. I do. Good <laughs> night. Just, I swear. I remember that food. Yeah. <laughs> so, Nine years ago, and at that time you were working at Legacy Health. For those who don't know, Legacy mm-hmm. Health is a family-centric, uh, community-centered uh, clinic, if you will, yes. health mm-hmm. clinic. Yes. Um, and they have them all over Houston. All they over do. Houston. Mm-hmm. All over Houston. This one in particular was in, in Fifth Ward. In Fifth Ward, yes. Yeah. And now we're in, I mean, we've expanded to Third Ward, Beaumont, Baytown. So, yeah, wow. all over Houston. Absolutely. Which Legacy does good work. You know, the partner at the mm-hmm. firm that I work with, she actually used to work with Legacy. Um, Legacy has uh, a, a really good reputation. And before mm-hmm. we, we're going to get into some of the other stuff, but I will say this. A lot of the organizations in Houston and everybody always asks me about, you know, my why, why there are mm-hmm. some things that I just don't like about Houston. But a lot of the organizations in Houston are just there to be there. Mm-hmm, and I mm-hmm, say this I all the time, that. you know, like eh, just because we should do can do something doesn't mean we should. Absolutely. It should be in the best interest of the community. Right. And because that is always, always, always will be and always has been my premise. Mm-hmm. Um, it's important to, again, have those those organizations that are Absolutely. serious and that expand. They're so, serious about the work and that want to do something for the community. Absolutely. 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 So even us clicking, you know, I think part of that was a Scorpio click. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> OK, let's just tell it like it is. <laughs> but the rest of it was genuine. I see you, you see me. Let's yes. get to work. Let's do this work. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so nine years ago and at the time you were bringing community partners in. Now mm-hmm. tell me, lead us up to today. Like what, what has that work been like and what have your passions been like? Because we're going to get to the book. We're going to get yeah. to that book. But 
tell me like, you know, give me some insight here. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, oh God, it's just, it's been on, it's been a roller coaster, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, which is a good thing, you know, definitely a good thing. Totally. And so, um, yeah, just definitely trying to reach out to different community partners who are able to see your vision and you have similar visions and, you know, you, you definitely want to partner with one another. Um, you may have something that, you know, I can't provide and then vice versa. And so that's what community partnering is about. It's just coming together and stick, looking at the whole picture and saying, okay, what is it that you can do? What is it that I can do? What is it that Karen or somebody else, well, I don't want to use the word Karen, but you know what I mean. Oh, I know. <laughs> Girl, don't get me started with that. We ain't going to use that. No, but you know, it may, yeah. it may be somebody else. It may be another family member, another friend, or somebody who's working in the community and you see their work. Um, you see how passionate they are and everybody just comes together and say, this is what we're going to be able to do. This is what we're going to put together and provide these resources for the communities, for those communities that are lacking, that don't have resources. And so, yeah. So, you know, when I moved here in 2007 and started working, I just saw a need. I really saw a need in fifth ward and, um, I just got passionate about that community. And so legacy per seven. Yeah. Here that's I am whining about, well, no, it's 2009. Okay. 2007. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when I moved here. I moved to Houston in 2007. Where did you move and, from? Uh, Where'd you move from? From California. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think I knew that. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm originally a California girl. Cali. And then, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still, I'm still going to be always the Cali girl to the heart. Yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but you know, my family is from here. I have family that is, that's from here. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so that's what brought me here was my family. Um, and again, just wanting something different and Houston was a place to be. And so again, something drew me to fifth ward and, um, yeah, I just pretty much just been kind of servicing that community ever since. And, uh, and Legacy provided me an outlet to be able to do that. Because being in community relations, that's all your job is, right? Right. It's a community. Right. right. Um, that's my title, is making sure that I'm providing resources for the community. And, um, and so I thank Legacy for that because it has allowed me to be able to kind of branch out and really kind of me being on my own and me have a platform to bring all of that resources to Fifth Ward community. And yeah. also now Third Ward, too. I mean, you know what's so crazy? I mean, not crazy, but those areas, um, they need a lot of work. Mm -hmm. They need a lot of work. And from historically, you know, what's happening with those areas is just, you know, some of it's yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's like, well, wait a minute. The people were here first. Exactly. Yeah. That yeah. too. <laughs> so, and, and you see the development, you know, you see the development slowly happening. Yeah. But that yeah. takes a lot of work, like you said, and that takes time. It does. It does. Yeah. So what what do you think? I mean, just and this is moving along in the conversation. What do you think out of all of those interests and all of those, you know, all that recognition? Like, what is the one thing that has stood out to you as being most needed? Mm, that's a great question. I would definitely say uh, resources and, and access to good quality health care. That's definitely um, for sure yeah is one um housing affordable affordable um, housing. Yeah, yeah housing people who can be able to come in and say okay i and I, I can afford to live here in this community you know when i commented on the post and i said two of my favorite d's um what's my other boo name i didn't i didn't forget Deshara. Her name. Deshara, <laughs> Lord. Yes. please don't be watching Deshara. <laughs> she probably is yikes <laughs> But she knows, I, she knows I love her. I'd actually yes. reached out to her because of the work that I do as a mm -hmm. cultural communications consultant. Um, just recently, uh, we were working on My Home is Here, which, is a, which was a Harris County um, Community Services Department needs assessment for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And affordable housing has so many intersectionalities. It does. Mm -hmm. That, um, Man, I'm, it's, I'm not going to get all sensitive, but that's that's the outside of literacy and access to quality education. I, I feel you. If we can chip away at that, then we can help eradicate poverty. And that Absolutely. is a big overhaul because there's a lot of layers involved. There's housing, there's land, there's building, 
you know. Yes, exactly. Transportation, lot. all of that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> um, food security. I mean, just. Food security. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. We can keep going down the list. <laughs> Ooh, but. I'm so glad you said that because I just wanted to see, you know, like, yeah, give me a, give me some intel here. Like, what mm-hmm. do you think would really be that thing? And then the, the resources too. you know, I'm, I find myself and I don't know. Tell me how you feel about this. Mm-hmm. It could just be me. I find myself saying, well, there are tons of resources out here, mm-hmm. but, do, but are they working? Hmm. You know, because you think about it and it's like, man, there's a lot of nonprofits out here and a lot of people yeah. doing the work. But it seems that if there is more, there's always going to be more demand for need. Yeah, it always is. Yeah. That's yeah. just, that's the nature of the beast, unfortunately. Totally. I get you it. Know? But I'm just, in terms of sustainability, it's like, mm-hmm. what can we do different and or better, if anything? You know? Right. Yeah. Like, I, like, can you really see the work being done? Right. Yeah. Right. Great and great lives question. being changed mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, not just, you know, exploiting poor people and making them feel good about being poor for a little it, bit. Right. Yeah. Here's a free <laughs> backpack. <laughs> it's like, I don't need that, though. I need to know how to read, you know? That too. <laughs> so, all right. See, Ooh, we're just it. talking <laughs> like, you know, we sister girls, which we are. Mm-hmm. But it's a big conversation and it has to be intimate because it's Absolutely. it's all of what we do here at Imagery. Imagery is always community. It's always been our business. I'm going to be very transparent at this point. Back when Denisha and I first met, I was doing a lot for free. And I was doing mm-hmm. a lot for free because I was in the midst, and I didn't really vocally tell anybody, of doing a community-based participatory research project where mm-hmm. I would just show up to instances to, to buildings and to places like yours. I would show mm-hmm. up at Star of Hope. I would show up, I mean, the Walk for Literacy. And I would just give away books and I would talk to the parents and say, mm-hmm. you know, come holler at me. What's going on with reading at home? Mm-hmm. And they would tell me the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, even when I taught in a classroom, it was the kids would tell me the truth. No, I don't know how to read, Miss Tiffany. And, wow. you know, it was, well, what do you do with that? Well, I don't do anything. And that's what really got me engaged. So back when I was doing a lot of the work that I do for free. But when we talk about sustainability and really supporting, that's why I asked that question. Because it's, well, we can't do the work without money. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. doing the work without money, like to put me in a poor house. Mm-hmm. But... It's necessary. And I'm just always looking to have the conversation with those who are equally invested, if not more so, Mm -hmm. about how we can better invest in these viable solutions for the community. Because that's it's always going to be our business. The community comes first, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I ask those questions and just, you know. Good. Yeah. Good. And the work that you have done has expanded tremendously. It has. (laughs) It has. It has. And I'm going to keep going. You know, some Mm -hmm. days I'm just like... Oh my God! Just mm-hmm. let me sing songs, mm-hmm. like I'm, right? <laughs> just let me sing. Let me be the next, you know, whatever. Be on a beach singing, have a margarita cart. I don't know, you know, right. something else. <laughs> you have those days, I know. Seriously, I get it. <laughs> because you care too much. But at the end you of the do. day, mm-hmm. you recognize this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. and yeah. that's what keeps you going. Totally, mm-hmm. totally. So now you know. I have to ask this next question. I'm, I'm, we're doing really, really good here. Um, by the way, if you are on Facebook, on Instagram, you should already be following Imagery. But if you're not, follow us at Imagery and also follow Denisha at the Primway. We were talking about her website. She's doing some website switcheroo. Mm-hmm. It's um, uh, you know, it'll be back up soon, and um, you'll be able to engage in all of the wonderful work that she does once that website is back up. But in the meantime, I think, I think it is actually back up. Uh, oh, nice. I just checked it today. So it's um, www.theprimway.com. Oh, nice. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank see. God. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Okay. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post that too for those who, you know, may want to uh, visit the website. Visit the website. Yeah, this is the website is, because, again, everything that we're talking about is all laid out there because it's so much more Denisha. She's being modest. And I know. Like, I know. I just <laughs> care. And I'm like, no, you do more than that. So um, in talking about this, um, I want to talk to you about what you have because you said I've come a long way. Yeah. So have mm-hmm. you, you know, you've mm-hmm. you found your, you know, space, right? Yeah, this, and, and showing up and doing this service. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I want you to talk about that. Like, what, what are you doing lately? Yes. Yeah, so, oh my gosh. So um, I am working with uh, mental health first aid. 
And so, um, and since it's May Mental Health First Mental Health Month, yeah. Mental Health Awareness Month, we definitely kind of got to get in, into that. We do. Um, and, and that's one of the things that, you know, we didn't mention when we talked about some of the services that we need to bring into the community. And I don't even know why, but I'm oh, like, yeah, it's Gosh, yeah. yes. <laughs> that's a yeah. huge need. It's a huge need. Um, access to, again, uh, quality services and quality mental health care providers, you know, is just the need is just so huge. And we just don't have enough uh, of the providers out there. And so one of the things that I decided to do in 2020 was um, I got my certification in mental health first aid. Um, so I'm not a licensed um, therapist or psychologist, but mental health first aid, what it does is that it allows you to take the certification and you become a first aider. So kind of like um, CPR and first aid, mm -hmm. you know how important that is. If you Very. see somebody that falls out and if yeah. you are a, a certified first aid, uh, you can do what you need to do to kind of bring yeah. that person back. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so same way with mental health first aid, if you see someone who is experiencing a crisis, you'll be able to know and recognize those signs if they are suicidal, if they are experiencing um, some behavioral problems and mental health problems, and you kind of see that, you'll be trained to be able to recognize those signs and symptoms and be able to go get that person some help. And so, um, you know, I did the certification, of course, in 2020 when everything was shut down, because I was experiencing my own yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think we all kind of had that just aha moment, like, okay, wait a minute, this whole pandemic, it just kind of got me in this funk, right? Totally. And so, um, and so, yeah, I was in the funk for a little bit. Yeah. And so I said, you know, I got to go get some help. I went to therapy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah. was number one. And so, uh, and then I decided, I said, okay, you know, I want to become a professional in this. And, um, and yeah, and, and and got my my certification in mental health first aid to become not only just a first aider, but also to be an instructor, to train those, to so go into to different schools, uh, to work in high schools, to work in uh, um, the precincts, you know, go to the police departments, wherever I can, to be able to get those people educated. If you're working in the community, you should have this because you want to make sure that you can help those individuals who are suffering, right? Totally. And be able to get them some type of resources. So that was really, you know, my main thing for wanting to do this is I was just seeing a, a lot of suicides mm -hmm. um, and still still seeing suicides. And uh, that's something that was it just kind of tugged on my spirit. And I said, OK, you know, uh, we're seeing a lot of suicides within our community. Then we need to get trained in this so we can start helping you know, the people who are around us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. And and I will say, you know, I know the pandemic just, you know, exacerbated mm -hmm. whatever was happening prior, you know, Absolutely. so um, it's just been, it's, you know, we're all having a human experience mm -hmm. and, and, and mm -hmm. our experiences look different. So mental health and mental health and wellness has always been too something yes. that, you know, I've been on the on the front lines for, you know, and it mm. even in terms of practice, it's maybe if you are traumatized, I can't teach you nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, let's mm -hmm. just tell the truth, you know, mm -hmm. so sure. the, the mental health first aid piece has always been intriguing. In fact, when I when we were doing some work for um, OST South Union, the health improvement partnership, mm -hmm. we <clears throat> that's the first time I learned about mental health first aid. Mm -hmm. And I was intrigued by the concept because. I thought, yeah, this just makes sense. Why did it take this long to figure this out? Exactly. <laughs> and guess where guess where it started? It came from Australia. That's where it started. It was in Australia, right? <laughs> so you would think, you know, here in the United States is something that we should have been kind of took over and, and did, but Wow. I know, right? But anyway, they brought it over here to the United States and um yeah, we've been going strong ever since. So loved it so much. You know, you're going to therapy like, yeah, whatever. Loved it so mm -hmm. much. Let me go ahead and become a facilitator, a mm -hmm. trainer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what have, have you been using it with legacy? Like, what have you what have you found since then? Have you found it's valuable? You know? Yes, definitely. No, I haven't used it with legacy, okay. um, but I have kind of branched out, you know, on my own under the Primway. So, um, 
under my own consulting firm, okay. I've, I've done it that way. Gotcha. And so just done it with just other small nonprofit organizations with getting their staff trained. Um, there was a few nonprofits who felt like this was a great need. Their staff already works in the community. Um, they have experienced some crisis uh, with some of their clients and they didn't know what to do. Um, you know, they started recommending them to go to different other healthcare facilities, but then when you have a long waiting list and you can't get in to see a provider for six months to a year, maybe even longer, you know, it's like, well, I'm not really helpful. Right. Totally. So, um, so yeah, so a lot of nonprofits are understanding that, okay, well, this is another avenue. This is another way that I can be able to help provide some resources for those community members who need um, some type of, um, some help, some, some mental health first aid help. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so definitely just kind of branched out on my own in that aspect and just been reaching out to just different um, community partners. Uh, for, uh, um, oh gosh, what's the name of it? I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, so I've just done some training with different staff members to get them trained to be a first aider. And it's primarily your target who you're looking to engage. And I'm just anybody, any and everyone who's watching. Hello, everyone. And welcome. Thank you for being here with us mm -hmm. on this Sunday, you know, afternoon, moving into evening, you know, who might be your preferred group that you want to work with? That's what I want you to, you know, what my preferred would probably be teachers. Definitely nice. teachers in, in high schoolers. I've definitely seen an increase of these young teenagers who are just feeling like they have no hope. Pressure. They're, yeah, there, it's a lot of pressure there. Um, the times are different, right? Times have changed completely. And unfortunately, that particular generation um, is having a hard time with transitioning to these new times that we're all trying to adjust to right now. Well, we grew up in somewhat of a reality where they're growing up in a virtual reality. Exactly. And yeah. They, you know, they have to converge it. And it is. It's tricky. It's tricky for us. We grow. It is. <laughs> you know, so I get it. Yeah. And, and they do need the most help because you, you think in terms of present future. Mm -hmm. that they are. So mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. can totally see that. And also the teachers. I love mm -hmm. that you said teachers. Mm -hmm. They need. Oh, Lord. Yes, it's heavy. Very. It really is. It's really heavy. And so, you know, I get they're doing the best that they can as, as teachers. You know, God bless them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if they, if the schools, the school districts can get their teachers certified, um, and be able to help them to recognize. I mean, they're with their they're with the students all day long, right? And so if they can get certified so they can start recognizing the signs and symptoms of what their students are going through, they can say, okay, you know what? This student is just not a bad student. Um, but he's he's suffering from something else. Yeah. So what can I do to help them on? the mental side of things. I mean, and here's the thing, and I, and I know you're going to be looking at me cross-eyed, <laughs> but in my mind, you know, it's, well, why wouldn't we be thinking this all along? I know. Children are children. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, girl. I, when I tell you I have a pet peeve about adults uh -huh. talking about children, I'm uh -huh. ready to fight. I, know. I, don't, I don't know how to fight, Denisha. I don't know how to fight, but I'd be ready to fight. Like, I know, I get it. It's a child. It's a child. Something is going on. Mm -hmm. And some behaviors are just childlike behaviors. They are. Right. You know, some, some, some ch behaviors are just, we make too much of it. Seriously. But the ones Because that, we run it on short fuse. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times we're the one, so we push them over the edge anyway. No, for real. <laughs> We're trying to adult. It's not working mm -hmm, out, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm, and they're mm -hmm. like, yo, I'm just being a kid. I'm just being a kid. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But for those who do have, you know, those those issues, those mental health or behavioral issues, I would love for the teachers to be able to be certified in this so they can help them in other areas. That would be yeah. phenomenal. So here's mm -hmm. the call. It is official. You know, mm -hmm. we've talked about this offline, but we talked about, you know, just really, really positioning, you know, you to be able to do some more of this work because I believe in it. And I know you, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I know you're committed to it and serious about it. So this is the call. If anybody is watching, whether it be now or later when this comes to YouTube, mm -hmm. what I would encourage you to do is think. Yes. Spend five minutes. What organization am I affiliated with? I belong to. Uh, the have you the likes 
and and send Denisha a message yes. and just say, hey, you know what? This organization I think would be good for this training because it really is to be mm -hmm. very honest for everyone. Mm -hmm. It really is. It really is. It's for everyone. Mm -hmm. Now more than ever, I mean, just if you go outside your doors, you know, many people don't anymore, but if you go outside your doors, you mm -hmm. can feel how mm -hmm. the energy has shifted. A lot of people mm -hmm. are angry all the mm -hmm. time. All the time. All the time. All the time. You can't even now, get in your car. <laughs> no, seriously. And so right now what we have to do, and I said this years ago, and then when it happened, I was like, see, I knew there was going to come a point where we would have to learn how to be human again. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what we're in the middle of, you yes. know, they're, um, they're incredible. So just want to, just want to show this. This is, this is dear friend, fellow author. She is joining us from the UK. Hi. Hi. Hello. Also, <laughs> also Scorpio magic. The oh, issues nice. you outline, <laughs> I know are profound. Denisha, your input is incredibly needed. It's true. Mm. It's true. When you think about um, mental health and education and, and we, we talk about this, her and I talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you can't have one without the other. Right. Like if the brain is not working, functioning, where's all this information going? Exactly. Right. Everything else will start to decline. It will. Mm -hmm. Physical mm -hmm. health and mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. likes. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. all right. So ladies and gentlemen, here again, thank you so much for that comment, Irie. So glad to see you joining. Um, but um, again, think of an organization, send Anisha a message. You can, again, follow her on the Primway at IG or Facebook, even go to the website, send her a message. That would be good. We really do need more of this training, not just mm -hmm. local to it. Well, let me ask you, is the certification, is it, are you only able to train in Houston? Oh, no, no, it's nationwide. Oh, this is nationwide. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I had to be smart about that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Totally, totally. Um, because it just makes sense. All right. Yeah. So we halfway there and I, I don't want to miss what, you know, what else we're supposed to be talking about, <laughs> you know? Um, right. I started actually this other day. I said, well, wait a minute. Is there a real JoJo? <laughs> <laughs> there is a real JoJo. <laughs> there is a real JoJo. So ladies and gentlemen, now I'd like to, we like to shift from, we talking to the mental health, you know, first aid advocate <laughs> and community, you know, health advocate and champion to talking to JoJo's mom. Yes. <laughs> Denisha Prem. Okay, so hey, tell JoJo. us all about hey, JoJo. <laughs> so tell us about JoJo. Tell us about JoJo and then work us to, you know, how, yes. how, what, what, what was it? What, what was it that made you want to write a book? I remember getting the message from you, but I was like, oh, maybe she's just thinking about it. So talk right. to us about it. Right. So, um, so Jojo is a rescue dog, actually. Really? Yes, I'm listening. Was, I'm just getting my plug here. Yeah, no, you're good. He was found by a family friend. Um, so funny because he was actually uh, in a convenience store. And what? so, yeah. He so just, I, like... Yeah, ended there? just ended up there. One of my friends was in the convenience store um, and she saw this dog and asked around like, OK, whose dog is this? And no one claimed him. No one knew what this dog was, how he even got in the convenience store in the first place. Wow. And so even the owners, nobody knew. They just said that we didn't even they didn't even see the dog. My friend is the one who saw the dog. And so um, and so she's an animal lover. And so she started putting out signs and started talking to people that lived around in the area. And so she's like, well, whose dog is this? And um, yeah, nobody claimed him. And so anyway, she called me. So she's like, I can't keep this dog. And so she didn't want to take him to, to um, you know, to, to animal shelter or anything like that. So she's like, so um, I know you love dogs. Would you mind taking a dog? I was like, well, I don't need a dog. I don't know if I want a dog. Yeah. <laughs> I have, right. to talk to my, I have to talk to my right. husband about it right. first, right? right. And so I can, let me ask. And so my husband was fine with it. He's like, okay, well, let's see. So, uh, so yeah, so I went and I met him and, oh my God, I fell in love with him. He has just the biggest heart, the biggest personality. And so I um, took him to the vet. He didn't have a chip or anything like that. And so decided to keep him. I said, you know, this is a wonderful, big hearted dog. And just, he was just a big ball of love. Is and he so a he's just. Is he a rottweiler? No, he's a snowlager. 
Really? Yeah, and he's a sinologer. I'm thinking from the colors, okay. Yeah, yeah, he's a sinologer. Um, he's in the other room. I'll put him up because he can get kind of rowdy sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, he's just a big ball, you know, big ball of just energy and just love. And instead of always licking, it feels like he's kissing, which is where the terminology came from, was the kissing dog. Because uh, we, me and my husband were sitting on the patio one day, and so he jumps on our laps, and so he just starts licking. I told my husband, I said, it seems like he's trying to kiss us. You know how animals are. They just yeah, seem like yeah, they yeah. just want to be affectionate. And it just seemed like he's just kissing rather than hugging. And so we both said to the other, it was like, yeah, he's more of a kissing dog. Yeah. And so then, of course, when 2020 happened, everything shut down, and just mine started going all over the place. I'm like, okay, well, what, what can we do? What can we do different? And so I just sat down, pulled out my journal and I just started writing and I just came up with just this whole story behind Jojo and imagining um, his life right as a dog mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you know I love imagine I read because I'm imagining that's right <laughs> That's what this we do. A, yeah, that's what you do, right? <laughs> so I just started imagining his life as a dog, and I just wrote down literally like his life in my journal. Yeah. yeah. And that's how the book became. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. So let me let me go back. So you said he was a, he's a beautiful dog. He has a mm -hmm. beautiful spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, we talked briefly about, and not to just bring this back up, but would you say that since he's been there, that it's helped in terms of the mental health. And I'm asking for a couple of reasons because we are thinking about getting a pet. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. so, and that's what I would encourage, you know, I would encourage anybody to really adopt a pet, um, an emotional support animal, because they do, they do something, right? Um, they do something to your psyche to make you just, you just feel better. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a professional behind it, but just being that I have and I, and I gotten this this dog during the height of the pandemic, um, he just made me feel better. Yeah, he made my husband feel better. Um, just walking in, we come into the house from work. You know, he just you just you can't help but to feel good. Yeah. Um, even when you are down and out, when you're feeling depressed and feeling sad about something, they know. Yeah, they, they know. Do. Yeah. <laughs> they they know when you're going through something, right? Yeah. And so they come, they check on you. You know, he comes, he jumps up when I'm sad about something. It's almost as if again, like he wants to hug you, he wants to give you a kiss, he wants to make you feel better. Yeah. And so that's why I say, you know, that he's he's uh, an emotional support animal because they do make you feel this way of uh, of kind of bringing down your stress levels, mm -hmm. you know, and making you feel calm. Um, and you know, we go outside and we just play with them. And then, so you're not even thinking about all the things that you're going through anymore because now you're focusing on the dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Reconnecting with the humanness. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Totally. I love that. I love that. Um, wow. Okay. Jojo one for Jojo. Okay. For so, <laughs> so you're envisioning what you did, you come up and, and then this makes sense being highly imaginative, of course, mm -hmm. loving to read. So you, you personify Jojo and his life. Yes. And you 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 wrote it. And I remember again, you sent me a message. I said, Yes, let's talk about this. But at the time, I think it was just so much going on. Yeah. And so next thing I know, I look up and I'm like, oh my gosh, she did it. Yes. <laughs> she done. did it. Exactly. It's Which it's was done. remember what I said to you. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe that I didn't think about because mm -hmm. Meet the Author has so and I'm so gracious. It's been going. We started last year mm -hmm. in January. And um so we've had, this is our, wow, let's see, ninth, uh, this is our 14th episode. Right? Oh my goodness. I know. Good. You know, good. I just thought it was I didn't even be... know that. No, I'm glad, seriously. I'm glad I didn't know that. <laughs> yes. And I probably should have sent you, I don't think I, I think I did the girlfriend thing, like, girl, come on the show. But mm -hmm. I probably should have sent you the formal where you can go to the YouTube page and see all of the previous. But um, it's been well received and it has nice. because- Again, when we're thinking about literacy, it's twofold, right? Mm -hmm. I can't exclude readers, but I can't exclude authors either because mm -hmm. this is this is this is a connection that we need to make. Exactly. And oftentimes readers are, you know, who are struggling and or reluctant, even those who love to read, they just need to be connected to author's purpose. Yeah, um, absolutely. I get you know, that. they I, need I, to I 
behind the scenes is good for them. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. and, and connect to the author. I see that. I totally yeah. see that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and you know, and with that being said too, um, I'm also, I'm coming up with a coloring book with children of the a coloring book. And, um, and so when you said that something just clicked, um, with reading and for those who have uh, issues with reading, the coloring book yeah. is going to be associated with the words and coloring, you know, the words. So, yeah, all of that just it, it just all come it all came together. No, I feel you. It all came together. <laughs> Look, sometimes when I'm when when that happens to me, I'm like, mm. and of course the other person is like, what? I'm like, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't understand. You wouldn't I get understand. it. <laughs> it just all click 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 click. Right, right. Like, wait a minute, I don't have no. It's all just going. It's all right. right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Gosh. But that's a good thing because remember, and I'm talking about this here. If if you do, if you're again, if you're watching and you care, Imagine Read is morphing into Imagine Reading Adventures. We are actively looking for young people ages nine through twelve who may be deemed struggling and or reluctant readers to go through our beta free program. And what we're, what we're shooting to do is to be able to, to do that program all summer virtually. That means we would literally support those learners all summer for free. Nice. For free. Yeah. Oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah. Because here's the thing that we leave out and, and, and talked about this uh, Saturday morning before, I think it was like two weeks ago. There's There are developmental stages that happen throughout both phases, learning to read and reading to learn. And mm -hmm. what happens from a mental health standpoint around about second, third grade we start seeing some really some milestones developmentally. But again, mm -hmm. if there's some mental health issue, mm -hmm. they're off and mm -hmm. they never catch up. Right. So um, those grades, those ages are really, really important because that's where we, we see the most imagine readers like slip through the cracks. So when you just said, hey, I just got something there, um, that is really this broader conversation about pets, getting children pets. Um, being able to, you know, have resources. Like you said, you'd found that the dog was yours. He just happened to be looking for you, you know, exactly, form, you know, <laughs> but just thinking about this in a broader sense that, you know, these, these are, these things are all connected to learning and literacy, right? Having a pet, doing these things, all these things. And it's just important that we keep our eyes on it. So I love that. I love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well so can't wait. Can't, <laughs> Can't wait for the killing for the coloring book. Yes, I'm color. excited. <laughs> Love to color. Um, awesome. Okay, so you got the story. The coloring book is coming, and JoJo in and of itself is great. Have you done any in person like story time? Like, tell us about this journey being an author. Yeah, no, I haven't. Not yet. I actually, you know, I have my first one coming up this Friday. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. I'm excited. Yes. Um, one of my school teacher friends uh, reached out to me and um, school is getting ready to end soon, of course. And so she wanted to get me in before I leave that out, leave out of school. And so she's like, you should come in at nine o'clock, uh, bring the books and, um, you know, read to the students. And so she wants me to read to her kindergarten class and then a couple of first grade classes as well. So what? this will be my is... first one. Let me, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> You are going to be addicted. Really? Oh my God. <laughs> By far. And because mm -hmm. publishing in and of itself, because I'm actually like, in fact, when we get off, I have two clients that I'm, I'm finishing up their books, but publishing in itself is tedious. It's a mm -hmm. lot of paperwork. Mm -hmm. It's a it lot is. of processing. <laughs> and, I, and I teach kids about, you know, book development and production as mm -hmm. part of lesson. But when you actually have the finished product and you're able to sit with them and read like it is like nothing oh, else right read your own product your own book yes. to them. i'm excited <laughs> you should be that is going to be so awesome be remember 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 tell what can hubby go or no he can't go uh, i have to ask i'm not sure what his schedule is like okay because i'm like somebody need to take pictures because oh, that's right. always been my thing like every now and then they would be like hey you want us to take a photo and it would just be because I'm so engaged with the kids. That's my space. Like, yes. Yeah. You're space, not. You're not like, worried about bringing your camera. Totally. And trying to do all, yeah. But so I probably will. Pictures. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I want their pictures, and and hopefully they can video. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll ask the teachers if that if that's possible. Okay. Awesome. But I'm excited. So this is my first one. My one of many. Hope. <laughs> no, tell me. I would be texting you Friday, like noon, like, hey, how did it go? Right. Yeah, kindergarten and first grade. Those are again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, learning to read phase very important it's because very, 
-hmm. you learn what manipulative you learn through play so it would be so good you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. yeah that, that's going to be awesome. Okay. Yes, I'm excited. Very good. Very good. All right. So <clears throat> last but not least, I know we have a little bit more time, but I don't, you know, unless there's something else you want to tell us, I want to know where people can find JoJo the Kissing Dog. Because here's the thing. Tons of people have dogs and they love mm -hmm, their dogs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm expecting this to be a bestseller, like by the time we leave this live stream. <laughs> where y'all okay. dog lovers at? Buy this book. Lovers, where you at? <laughs> Buy for your baby. Buy for your grandbaby. Buy exactly. For you, you know. Oh my gosh! You know the little babies love it. That's what's funny because I had a couple of friends who took pictures and they were like, "My little toddlers, they just they won't put it down. They yeah. just because it's so colorful, you yeah. know." And I was very intentional behind that. I was intentional behind the colors. Um, intentional behind the characters. Yeah. Um, it, it's a story of two boys, two African American boys. And so um, just very intentional behind that. Yeah. And so, yeah, so with the colors and with the story, it just, it, toddlers and, and, you know, school age kids were able to gravitate to it. I love the fact that JoJo, and, and, and show us the cover one more time. Yeah, absolutely. JoJo was on that cover by himself. Mm, by himself. <laughs> <laughs> like you would honestly think about that. Like you said, you know, the characters, there are two young boys, but mm -hmm. you wouldn't know that looking at the cover. And that's, that's another piece of literacy. Mm -hmm. We know mm -hmm. that in terms of appeal for children, that you're more likely, um, well, let me say this, that book in and of itself, because a dog is from a psychological perspective, mm -hmm. girls mm -hmm. would be they would find it intriguing because I didn't, mm -hmm. and, and it took me a while to know this, but girls, anything that sometimes is related to being a veterinarian or caring for a pet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. appeals to them. Girls, like, right. Yeah. So when mm -hmm. you just said there's two boys, I'm like, yeah. so you wouldn't know that. You yeah. get a whole surprise. Yeah, a whole surprise. A whole Don't surprise. judge a book. <laughs> right. See, you did good. That's what I'm saying. You did good there. Yeah, Thank you, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. But it, it is on Amazon. They can definitely go to Amazon uh, and just you just type in Children the Kissing Dog and it pops right up on Amazon. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Very good. I mean, I, I looked and I said, on a, when we have a different call, I can text you about it. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to get a copy so that I can review it and, and use it. Cause mm -hmm. there are some books that I've reviewed with pets, but they've been, um, the story included differently able children, which I'm also sensitive about. Mm -hmm. Um, so children in wheelchairs and the like, um, gotcha. but from a pet perspective, you know, again, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about getting a pet for the youngest. Yeah, yeah, you should. And you know, I used to didn't be a pet lover, to be honest with you. Me neither. You know, that's why I tell my story in the back of the book as the author. I said, you know, I just, I wasn't raised around having pets. We didn't have pets in our home. Right. Um, and so it wasn't in, until I became an adult where I just saw how affectionate animals really are. Yeah. <laughs> I joke and I'm like, wait, all this time I've been invested in people and I should have just had a pet? That part. <laughs> What in the what? Nobody told me. <laughs> Could have saved you a whole lot of heartaches. No, for real. <laughs> Tanisha, I want a redo. <laughs> Can you get a redo? <laughs> Girl, I want to do over up in this mud. Just give me a pet in the beginning. Like, and then you look, you know? <laughs> seriously. But it is, you know, it does. And I know it's therapeutic. And I have, mm -hmm, I've had pets mm -hmm. before, but even, even still, when you think about it now, um, I can see it. I can mm -hmm. see it like never before. Even being an insurance agent and like really talking to those who own pets because oftentimes we weren't able to like insure a home if you had an aggressive dog. Oh, so wow. That, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's your liability because you know they bite somebody and then that's You're it. Right. Gotcha. Um, mm -hmm. But learning like, oh, well, you can't, my, my, that's my baby, you know. Mm, yeah. And so, I didn't understand that before. When I would hear that, you know, I used to work in foster care. I worked in foster care for 20 years. And I used to have to go to the homes yeah. to go check on the foster kids and make sure everything was good. And I used to get that all the time. Like yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to go into the house if they had a pet who was yeah. barking at the door. Right. And they would tell me, well, this is like a family member. Um, you can't come in unless you're comfortable with the pet. I'm like, no, you got to put the pet away. I'm not yeah, coming so in your house. Yeah. <laughs> like that's what we not go do. <laughs> Because if I'm afraid, then that child in there might be afraid. It, it, yeah, that too. Exactly. 
Um, but I just had so many misconceptions. And so um, I didn't understand that at that time that, yeah, this is literally like a family. This person treats this animal like a family like member, mm-hmm. you know? And, uh, and yeah, and so now, now I got a pet and I'm treating him like a family member. Yeah. Kissing, <laughs> hugging. I know. Who knew? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jojo does not be, he does not do all of that. It just emulates, you know, just, kids. It, exactly, you know. exactly. You know, because people are sensitive about certain things on the internet. So. They sure are. Oh my gosh. Like, mm, okay. I, yeah. So I love it. I love it. Love it. So on Amazon, um, you go to the website, the print and, on, and yeah. on the website too. You can go to the website Absolutely. and it's there as well. The link is Absolutely. there to, to get the book there too. Absolutely. I want everyone to go to the website and just check out Denisha, her story, um, all of what she's invested in, because there is a lot of intersectionality and she's a community champion for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I commend her and all of the work that she continues to do, because, again, it's it's not easy. No, not by far. <laughs> you know, you have your own thing, you have family and then you're out here, you know, on the front lines for the community. It can mm-hmm. be, a, it can be a lot. So mm-hmm. I commend you. I commend you. Thank this, you, ma'am. This was fun. Was was it fun? Was it fun? It was a lot of fun. Thank you See? so much. I told I you, know. like, we, we good. We good. We about to do the Scorpio thing. Exactly. Live on Facebook. Mm. We got to do it again for Scorpio season. We do. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Okay, so let me say this before we go. So November 1st is Family Literacy Day. November, oh. the whole month is Family mm-hmm. Literacy Month. And every mm-hmm. month, I do something special. And I wanted to do something extra special last year last November. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, it's that month, but, Mm -hmm. but I didn't get a chance to. So this November for sure, we are definitely, and I'm saying it here first, we're going to have a nice big virtual hoo-ha. Nice. Girl, I want to be a part of that. (laughs) Oh, you will. Don't you even work because the entire time we've been talking, I'm like, hmm, just like you did with that coloring book. Yes, right. (laughs) Aha moment. No, for real. (laughs) Oh, she'd be good to do. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> because I know this is real. It's genuine. And, exactly. and the work must be done. And yeah, um, again, I just commend you and I thank you. I thank you. Anything else you want to tell? Yeah. The summer reading is starting. Definitely want everybody to get a copy of the book. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I would encourage you also, if you haven't already, I know we were talking about this offline, to talk to the Houston Public Library to see if they consider rotating it. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a, and I don't know if they still have it, but they did way back when I first published my book, um, a people's choice program where they would, um, stock your book, put it on the shelf in that area. It's like, right when you come in, right mm-hmm. to the left, you go around the corner and they would allow the library patrons to vote if they actually want to carry the book. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I would definitely do that. So, you know, kids can, Kids can read it this summer. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Cost burden, can't afford it. You know, yeah. 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 So um, yeah. So put it on that summer reading list, that TBR, that to be read list. Jojo and the Kissing Dog. Jojo and Kissing Dog. Yes. Yeah. And just go to the website. There's a whole lot of other information there. Other classes that I do as well, the anger management, parenting, again, the mental health first aid. So there's a lot of different um resources and classes there that uh, on there. they can look yeah. into. Mm-hmm. Totally, totally. Yeah, I'm excited for you and just the future. Like not just for Friday. I'm just excited. I I love what you're doing, and I really appreciate you taking the time to come on and chat with us today. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love, yeah. you. love you. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. So if you missed the live stream, oh oh oh, wait 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 wait. I gotta show this. I already said one more thing. As authors engaging with children is such a joy. Joe Joe Joy. Oh my God, I love that. Aww. Thank you. Oh, that's so cute. Joy, come on. Mm. (laughs) Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us, Jojo Joy. Yeah, I we love that. She's so creative too. We're just like creative powerhouse. Um, Right. Totally, totally. This has been fun. It's fun, fun, fun stuff. And again, just encouraging everybody, go to the website, follow Denisha. You will not regret it. She is a bubbly spirit, been that way from day one. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I appreciate her. So, all righty, ladies and gentlemen, well, I hope your Sunday again, evening into into afternoon to evening is, is panning out to what you want it to be. It's Monday tomorrow, but mm-hmm. we're grateful, you know? We're grateful. We're grateful. So, grateful. <laughs> we're grateful. so we're signing off. Talk soon. All right. Take care.